Now, what is very important is that what if two events are correlated? Now, if two events, for example, I am tossing die, I die, die, die twice, once I get 5, another time I get 3, are they correlated? They are independent if the, uh, my experiment is, then two independent event will be, they are just probability of happening 2 is P A times P B. So, if it is uh, in case of my, I am throwing a die, then 1 over 6 into 1 over 6, that becomes 1 over 36, like if I have 1 and 5, then I get uh, 1 over 36 for that giant probability distribution. This is very important because in real world, in many, many cases, this independence, this independence theorem you can say, independence is not valid. Uh, so, not at all affected by one, uh, getting one, three of dice is not important uh, by the two, hence the probable probability as I said is, is multiplicative. Again consider two events A and B. Now, we want to know what happened in this case they are not correlated at all. One outcome of second experiment does not depend my outcome of the first experiment. However, as I keep saying in the most of the case in the world, these two are indeed correlated. That is what is interesting. Uh, what is important when there is a correlation. You have a phase transition when there is a correlation. You know, the, we live in this world because things are correlated. If they are uh, independent ideal gas, then we, we won't survive. So, now if we can ask the question given an event A, uh, what is the probability of the occurrence B? This is the call the condition probability that I give you an information. Now, if A has already occurred, then probability B depends that A has occurred. I give you an example. I take a liquid molecule and around the liquid molecule there are 10 neighbors. I tell you that there is a 10 neighbors now. Now, next time about say 1 picosecond later or 100 femtosecond later, I ask you what are, what are the probability the number of molecules will be 10 or 11 or 12 and you will know now it is within that number that will be either 10, 11 or 12. So, conditional probability says knowing an information of an experiment, when you know that then the your before even you do the next experiment, you have an idea of what would be the outcome. So, this is the what is the presence of correlation or correlated events is a very common term uh, we used in probability theory or physics or chemistry that the two events can be correlated by many different ways, but in the examples I am giving you they are correlated by intermolecular interaction. So, the study of statistical mechanics. So, we have now talked of random, uh, random variable, we have talked of sample space, we have talked when the two events are not correlated like throwing a dice or uh, mm, uh, tossing coin. However, in real world as I said, things are interesting only when they are correlated. And so, study of statistical mechanics is that is what uh, Boltzmann tried to do all his life this correlation between two particles in a binary system. Ideal gas does not have a correlation, but you can see even ideal gas has such rich, rich um, predictive power. When you take binary thing into account, you again go very far, but you have to work much harder now. So, study of statistical mechanics is a study of different types of correlations between atoms and molecules, whether liquid or gas or solid. So, or conductivity or uh, whatever you do, uh, this is essentially studies of these correlations in different form of other. So, uh, this we call of ideal behavior when total absence of correlation among molecules that we call very important term non-interacting limit. So, this non-interacting limit is the limit that we I said we will do later. Uh, then as I already said that the correlation is essentially conditional probability. So, when you talk of conditional probability the two events 
one happening and what is the probability then the, 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 the next experiment will have this outcome. That is essentially is the our beginning of the correlation. So, this is a quantitative measure. So, conditional probability provides a quantitative measure of such correlation that is how we con construct it. for example, radial distribution function or uh, uh, other things. As I said this is one of the central quantity in uh, in, in, in many body systems, so the colloids or liquids or um, um, your, your, your ostwall uh, ripening, all these things essentially depends on uh, these kind of things. So, I have some problems for you to do that uh, two unbiased dice are uh, rolled, calculate the probability that we already did, what is the probability of the number, this is simple thing. Now, I will give you an interesting result that the what is the probability that numbers of the two dice are different? And you can see that if I sum of the two outcomes and plot the probability of course, nothing can be below 2, nothing can be above 12, but this has this interesting structure because the one that is here is the maximum way it can happen. 2 is 1 plus 1, 12 is 6 plus 6, this so, as you have for example, 8, 8 can be 5 plus 3, 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4, okay. So, this is 6 possible outcomes and you can get the answer. Another thing is that from a well supple pack of 15 playing cards, uh, find the probability of drawing an ace, a king and a queen, uh, the order of draw is maintained you know you are doing like combinatorics and uh, permutation, the order is not important. Now, this is again uh, when order is important then of course, you have many more outcome when order is not important, when order is not maintained, okay. When order is important, yes you have a less number, but order is not maintained, you, every time you have lot more outcome. And uh, next is this is my favorite, I have talked about it there and uh, let us see a monkey typing a line from uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet, he thinks it is like weasel. Then you have 27 characters probability of writing. So, very interesting is that suddenly from this kind of rather innocuous textbook or you know high school math suddenly it graduated to a front line research problem. This happens in statistical mechanics. This is protein folding and most important uh, paper of protein folding, the Leventhal paradox. Mm. So, this is the beauty of the probability theory that everywhere you have to construct the elementary model and uh, and the basic idea again that if you do, if the uh, monkey has no like it typed randomly, then it takes, if how long it will take, it will have 10 to the power some 33 attempts. On the other hand, if you, this 2 to the power 78 is something like 27 to the power 8 and then this to the power n, uh, this is 10, somewhere there should be 10 to the power 33 uh, because I have done that. but. Uh, Mm, but anyway, you can uh, do it yourself and uh, yeah, it is a little bit more complicated that would be block of the correct 8 letters. This is a little bit simpler, you know this block of 8 letters made simple, but if you do there should be a blank here, me thinks it is like a weasel then you will have 27. 28 including blank, 28 paces. So, tw you have to have uh, 27 to the power 28, that many, that is your sample space, 27 to 28 and that is what I said 10 to the power 33. Here it makes a little bit simpler, there is a block of 8 layers. But whatever, so this is a Leventhal paradox that uh, Leventhal post in terms of protein folding. Now, I will so, this is the elementary probability theory. Now, I am going to do something ex extremely important and that is the central limit theorem. 
Now, as I told you that you know mathematicians are not given to use this kind of uh, terminologies that they have one thing they call fundamental theorem of uh, fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, what is the fundamental theorem of algebra? Anybody remembers? You read it many, many times in your uh, high school and your uh, BSc. Fundamental, this, I, I told you mathematicians do not at all, nothing is interesting for them. When they use a language like that, it is very important. What is the fundamental theorem of algebra? Guys, you should read up your algebra a little bit. No, no, no doubt people do not respect chemists. So, that is the theorem is that you have a polynomial of degree n, how many roots it has? Huh? n roots and now if this depending on the values of a, b, c, you can have all real or you have complex conjugate in pairs. Why it is so important? All your numerical work whenever you are finding a solution by we solve by method of roots. Even your underlying the programs you are using, fundamental theorem algebra is being used. Now, this central limit theorem is an amazing theorem, just an amazing theorem. This is the most fundamental theorem of um, not one of the most fundamental theorem of probability theory, saying that if A is very important in chemistry is a sum of n number of, we have talked about random variables, variables which can take random numbers within a sample space. n number of random variables, now let me, let me do, I am tossing the coin n number of times, the dice n number of times. Now, I define A's as a sum of the random variables. I give you the average number. Then the central limit theorem, this comes from nowhere. It tells you the probability that the sum has value a is, is this thing, but it is magical theorem. Hmm. Uh, I have I think in my, in, in my book I have probably three times I have discussed central limit theorem that is really magical. I have gone to many, many comprehensive you know in physics I do not have to ask they will always ask a stat uh, comprehensive or cumulative, cumulative exam what is central limit theorem and explain central limit theorem. So, this is now why your energy of the system is Gaussian and this full width at half of energy distribution, what is the full width at half in energy distribution? Specific heat this is delta E square is uh, C V cavity square C V. Volume which is sum of the volume of course that is uh, not fluctuating, but uh, you have to consider the empty space that is also then Gaussian and that also th uh, isothermal compressibility. And the way we when we used to do we did not always trust the computer program to give us random variables. So, we, we used to but we, used to, we have to sample from Gaussian distribution. You know, if you are simulating a Langevin dynamics, then your force has to be uh, uh, Gaussian distributed, right? And then we used to form this from an IC, we form the Gaussian distribution, then we sample from that distribution. So, this is what we use everywhere. Uh, the, in, 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 it is something we are routinely using in. Uh, in, in, in a time dependent statistical mechanics or equilibrium statistical mechanics or a, anywhere. Uh, so, many of the results, if you know the central limit theorem of statistical mechanics, they become uh, trivially A. So, total energy of the system, then weakly correlated, they has to be weakly correlated among themselves. There is a very strong theorem actually. And so, this is the specific heat as I just described invariably Gaussian with the standard deviation. Then the other thing that you know end to end distribution in a polymer chain and where the total end to end distribution is sum over sum over these things 
and then this end to end is Gaussian uh, distribution and that is again follows trivially you do not have to do anything uh, you know no random walk calculation it follows from central limit theorem and then many many other cases now in statistical mechanics we have the phase space density and all the probabilistic description goes in the air pair correlation function as I described Brownian motion I described protein folding Leventhal paradox the monkey typing Shakespeare sonnet so these are the things they are all essentially the A of uh, uh, probability theory. So to summarize this part of the probability theory uh, is that it is something essential and you have to you never know when you will leak uh, it but you better develop a good understanding of the correlations and prob sample space and the probability uh, that would really uh, stand you in good way uh, when you are doing uh, these things okay any questions. Uh, no, basic idea is to following, you have a random variable x, let us say position and you now uh, do an experiment find out what is the position. Now you do one more, so whenever you think of random variables you have to think what is the outcome, what are the values it can have that define the sample space ok. Now first I do the experiments find all the sample space. Now if I do an experiment I get a value say 10. Now I am repeating the going to the experiment. If it is not correlated next value can be anywhere in the sample space. However, if they are correlated then it will be a constraint on that, it will be near about that 10 eh? something uh, like that ok. Now uh, this is anything else, any other question, yes. Uh, mm. Sure, sure, it is a very good question. See, this is a just uh, very well def defined discrete experiment. Our outcome is discrete, uh, we are tossing, uh, we are doing a dice, and that is the reason it is cusp like thing. But if your outcome is a continuous, Within, within again a sample space, then you have no problem, then you have your smooth thing that you are looking for. Uh, that is what is important even when you do computer simulations, you know we always tell students to look at individual values, what are your outcomes? and have a many times the one or two results go out of bound then something is wrong and ultimately many times the program are becomes uh, unstable. So an idea of for example in a many body simulation energy has to be conserved. What do you mean energy has to be conserved? It is fluctuating of course, but it has to be fluctuate within a given bound volume if you do NPT simulation then volume is, is, is fluctuating. So, but you need to know when it fractures too much, we discard it because then we say okay my sample space is not what it should be. Uh, so um, instead of blindly going and using a computer program, it is very important to realize what is going on inside the uh, in, the, in, in not inside the program but in the, in the problem uh, what are the kind of things because like uh, one of my student now simulating the old problem I did long long time ago they, 
diffusion in a thirty years ago diffusion in a triangular potential which is a very interesting uh, trapping incident and one I uh, uh, once one professor from Cambridge was an FRS actually came to me and was very excited about that work he heard of that work and heard I am in Bang, uh, Bangalore he wanted to do a um, uh, study of chaos and I was least interested you know I was, I, 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 in, in my young age I would do what I want to do I just not interested anybody coming and telling me that let us do this problem I would not take that I should have done that uh, but that problem now the, my student I told him just simulate it find out so what happened there is a trapping it, it is not trapping in local in, in within a region it is trapping in a trajectory space. So then uh, it goes like this in a, along a line then after some time it goes off it becomes diffusive in a very long time. So how it goes from one trap trajectory to another trap trajectory and how the diffusion sets in. Um, when you publish that we did some work but we did not have this kind of computer power. So we, we could do only up to for example elementary steps of 1 million or so. To do this you need to run it many billions. So I am asking uh, I am telling the student look into it carefully as a problem of mechanics ok. Now we will uh, uh, any, any anything else? Uh, 1 over root over n uh, in all the power distribution that comes in uh, is that comes in of course from central limit theorem uh, if you do just the binary uh, coin uh, then 1 over root n comes in and uh, so basic idea uh, of course one gets from uh, other than central limit theorem the you want a physical insight 1 over root n uh, is that what your question ok. So, one of the thing is that you know the statistical mechanics that when we get delta e square and we divide delta e square by n uh, and a system is stable if it goes is n going to infinity the relative fluctuation has to go to 0 ok. So, we get uh, root over n by n you know and over 1 over root n that goes to uh, that goes to 0 and that saves our day and we become ok with that. Now, what precisely 1 over root over n comes from? In the tossing of coin that I believe comes from our application of Starling's theorem ok. Uh, but physical insight of that I have to think about it is a very good question probably I knew but now I do not remember it uh, uh, why it is 1 over root n why not 1 over why not n to the power 1 third right. Yeah, that is different, that is different, that is very different thing yeah. that, 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 that is when you have uh, instability or you have things going out of bound. Yeah, you get always 1 over root over n, central limit theorem gives you 1 over root over n uh, and many of the times we are happy with the central limit theorem giving 1 over root n. Uh, is there anything deeper into that? that means why 1 over root n why not a little different mm. probably there is a very simple explanation of that but I have to think about it and I will get back to you about that right now I am um, uh, more into uh, probably getting into the next uh, phase. Huh?